Hello everyone. How to help people with single-sided deafness optimally continues to be a topic of debate within the hearing care industry. Now we're at Oticon launching a new cross solution and today we'll focus on some of the more clinical aspects of fitting across two users. With me, I have Susanna Liu, Director of Clinical Audiology here at Oticon headquarters, and she's promised to share with us some of the knowledge and experience she has in this field. So, Susanna, I'd like to start uh, from scratch at some of the ter terminology that we see within this field. So, we know CROSS is a solution for people with single-sided deafness. But we also have the term unilateral hearing loss and mm -hmm. single-sided deafness and unilateral hearing loss. These two terms I often hear used interchangeably. Um, can, you, uh, can you tell us about are they the same thing or how should I interpret this? Actually, no, they're not the same, but we can certainly understand why they're used that way. Um, there's a, a small but very important difference when we're talking about single-sided deafness. This implies that you have no usable hearing on one ear, meaning you cannot, it's unaidable as we say, either because it's very profound and we can't provide enough gain, or it could be because the speech understanding is so poor on that side that uh, a hearing aid will not be a, of benefit. Whereas with unilateral hearing loss, that implies we have a hearing loss on one ear. And this also means that it is probably aidable, meaning if you wear a hearing aid, despite the severity of it, you will be able to uh, get some benefit. Uh, you will have normal hearing then on your other ear. In single-sided deafness, you can have your other ear with hearing loss, for example. So it's not a normal deaf situation. And that's, of course, also how we distinguish between cross and by cross fittings. Okay, so talking about, now you mentioned it yourself, cross versus by cross. There will be some borderline cases where, where you can be a little bit in doubt. Is, is, is this a cross or am I, am I moving into a, a by cross scenario here? Can mm -hmm. you maybe tell us a little bit about how we, we distinguish when to move from one to the other? Yes, but actually if you look in literature, it's not completely clear. There's a little bit of gray zone here. So let's say you have maybe just a little dip on your better ear. Do I choose cross or by cross? Uh, Genie will help you out there. We have some defaults and they're based on our own studies and, uh, of user preference and what we could find in literature. And the rule here is that we have, if you have two or more frequencies with uh, thresholds, below 25 dB or worse than 25 dB, it will default to a bi-cross fitting. The uh, hearing care professional can easily change that if they don't feel that this is the right solution. Um, and you can also play around in the software and give them different options. For example, give them two programs, one with cross and one with a bi-cross setting. So they can try both and see what they prefer. There's also the feature in Genie called balance. So if the uh, microphone is on on the hearing on the good ear side, um, that microphone will always be on, but you can determine or toggle between how much of the transmitted signal you want to come in and figure out if there's a specific balance need for your for your client. Okay, so so Jeannie will give me a suggestion as to what could make sense, but there's also some flexibility there for for me to to try with the user so that that they can find out what suits them the best. Yes, because as I said, it's not really a, uh, it, it's not a really clear picture for everyone what would be best for them. In my experience, I see most I've seen most people benefit from bicross, even if they have a little bit of hearing loss, uh, typically a little high frequency dip, they have done better in bicross, but uh, yeah, the, the, the studies aren't completely clear on it. Okay, so they've gotten the cross or bicross fitting, and uh, they go out uh, with, with this into their uh, real world environment. What challenges do, do we see for this, these people? Are there any situations that, that it's specifically important that, that we counsel them on? Definitely, um, because for example, there's a classic situation of I'm sitting next to you at a dinner party and we're having a pleasant conversation. My good ear is on your side. Um, if I have single sided deafness and this is my deaf ear, it's going to be transmitting sound from over here over to my good ear. Now in this situation that might not be optimal because 
what if I'm sitting next to another party of people or there's other sounds that are kind of disturbing my conversation with you? So in that case, I would w maybe want to mute the signal or I would at least want to give my clients some flexibility to adjust the volume, uh, mute or, or uh, yeah, in that situation to make it optimal. And there's other situations where cross is fantastic. For example, if my poor ear is on your side and I really need to hear what you're saying, uh, in that case, I would be sitting like this the whole time trying to hear you if I wasn't wearing my, my cross uh, solution. Okay, that, that's, uh, that, makes, that makes good sense. It, it kind of also brings me into expectation management. Is there anything uh, that we should be particularly aware of when we fit them? Yes, I think uh, one thing users often uh, confuse a little bit is they think they're all of a sudden getting binaural hearing. Uh, to hearing care professionals, well, of course they're not. They're just using one ear with two inputs. But that's not always clear to the user, so this is important to counsel on. But it also means that when you get a cross or a bicross solution, you're not all of a sudden able to localize because you're not getting it from two, from two ears, as we know. So localization is not shown to improve with a cross or bicross solution. Uh, what we do see is that in in our solution we have a little we apply a little high frequency filter to the transmitted signal, and that some people, uh, especially if they're very aware of sound and very um, attentive to it, they can hear that slight difference between the transmitted signal and the the amplified signal on their good ear or the natural sound coming in, and they use that little cue to help them figure out ah that was a transmitted signal must be coming from this side. But this is anecdotal, and I don't think we can apply this to everyone. But it's a good thing to maybe uh, be aware of as a hearing care professional fitting our solution. Okay, so because there's a slight difference between the two signals, the user may have some kind of benefit from, from the head theater effect after all. I, I would think, yes, yeah, that could be in some cases. Okay. Can we say anything about the outcomes, especially thinking of, think of a person that's had single-sided deafness for all of their lives and then come in and, and try a cross solution. Uh, can we say anything about the outcomes for those? I think we can. Um, it also goes back to expectations. Imagine if you're born with one ear that's completely deaf and you go throughout your life and no one actually tells you that there's such a thing as a cross or bi cross solution until adulthood. And unfortunately this happens uh, more often than we would like it to. They don't always see the light with a cross solution because they have adapted, their brains have adapted to hearing with one ear and they have optimized that situation in the best way they could. Because they have one functioning ear, they do quite well. They know how to position themselves in, in situations where they know they need to hear. So they don't always see the benefit, but sometimes they do. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not completely straightforward. Whereas someone with sudden hearing loss, they tend to be very motivated to get as much hearing or as much back as they can. So when they find out we cannot actually aid the poor ear, okay, a cross solution might be something good, and that'll give you some awareness of sounds on that side. They, uh, they want that to work. And so we often see that they keep their solution uh, uh, more. Okay, so, so their story kind of has an influence mm -hmm. on, on, on the outcome, so mm -hmm. to speak. Yeah. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Oticon solution because we talk a lot about this dual streaming functionality that, that's in the devices. Why is that a good thing as a user to have that? Well, this is a solution that's been unique uh, to Oticon Cross because what we can do is we can stream two signals at the same time. The transmitted signal is through near field magnetic induction, NFMI, and then you can also at the same time stream, for example, from a phone using Bluetooth low energy. Um, with other solutions, once you start streaming from an outside device, the transmission signal stops because they can't do both at once. And so we thought, well, what could be the advantage of that? And as it turns out, there is. Because sometimes when you're streaming, 
you still need to be aware of your surroundings. You might be out in traffic. You may have um, something going on around you that you need to just have a cue when, when something changes or you need to be made aware of. And we can see that they gain this type of uh, awareness towards speech when they have dual streaming. Um, so that's, uh, that's one of the things we found when we studied this when the first uh, cross came out, and that's still the way we implement our cross solution. Okay, so if I'm at home and I'm streaming from my phone, I'm, I'm in a phone call and my daughter calls me because she needs my attention, she knocked over a glass of water or whatever, I would still be able to, to hear her and, and give her my attention. Correct, and I think a good, a good um, comparison here is with the telecoil, which has been around forever. You've always been able to adjust uh, the hearing aid to, see, to say, oh, I just want input from the telecoil, or I want telecoil plus microphone. And that's basically what dual streaming provides you, the option to have streaming while uh, the microphone is still on. I think that's a great analogy. Thank you, Susanna, for, for coming and sharing all these great uh, insights with us. I think this is very useful and straightforward. If you want to know more about the new cross solution from Oticon, please contact your, your Oticon uh, representative or visit our website. Thank you for watching.